All righty then. I think it's about that time for us to have another show. Yep, it's about that time. Okay, everybody. All the buttons have been pushed. All the levels have been checked and rechecked. If I didn't know any better, I would say it's about that time for open session podcast to be on the air. So today we are going to speak to someone who is amazing when it comes to not only energy, but her ability to help us stay focused. So, man, I just hear this. I want to start dancing. All right. Let's let's handle our business. Let's bring in our guests. Let's get this done. What's up, Paxton? How are you? What it be like, girlfriend? How you doing? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on one second. I am so glad you're here. I love it. I have something special for you. What is it? Two yellow cards. Two pink cards. Okay. Nothing on either one of them. Okay. I am going to write down what you say and then ask you to talk about it at the end of the show. Perfect. Sounds good. Is that, is that okay with you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, How are you well, doing I tell you husband? what. I'm doing quite well. Um, your husband um, is also going to be a topic of discussion today, so I is hope you're ready. Really? Is he really? <laughs> she has, you guys, she has no idea what I'm going to do with her today, and she's going to like, I'm going to shoot him. If he says the wrong thing, he's dead. Okay, so check this out. Did you really contact my husband? Did you? Uh, no, no, I didn't say I contacted him, but I could have worked that out. Uh, that I could oh make, yes, I could have done that, me? but I didn't. I have to tell you, they threw me for a loop through my uh, bridal party, and they, like, did a whole interview with him, and I had to answer the questions for him, so I'm having flashbacks okay. right now. I'm like, did you really? You should have you should have never told me that. <laughs> I am, like, the wrong person to Hmm. Hmm, I could make that happen. Idea. Oh my god! <laughs> I could make that happen. Yeah. I got friends in the FBI, baby. Mm -hmm. I could find out mm -hmm. people. <laughs> so okay, so enough of that. Um, uh, today, no. However, very important question. Mm -hmm. Cannot go any further uh, in our discussion today unless I ask this question. Okay. Do you have a coffee cup nearby? I don't because I've switched. Am I like halfway through my day? I'm on my water. Oh my goodness! I can't believe you just did that. I am I'm thoroughly. Hey, you know what? I am you thoroughly know, unprepared. You Wait, know, I, 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 I literally. Seven, you know this. Do not I'm have water hard. nearby me. I gotta get this uh, gallon in, guys. Wait, you doing seventy-five hard? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Seriously? No, I'm on day forty-six right now, and that means I've gotten forty-six gallons of water in so far, and that's yes. Yeah. I had to sh like most of the time, like by one, two, three o'clock. I've already had probably like six or seven cups of coffee, but. <laughs> Now I got to switch okay. it up for water. All right. I, I literally got prepared to. I one, I'm going to do this. I'm going to show you this right down here. Hold on a second. I literally got prepared to have a meeting of the cups today. I literally uh -huh. was going to call the, call the show the meeting of the cups today. I uh, in which you had a cup and I had a cup because you have so many videos where you have a cup. Yes. And then what happens? I don't have any water nearby because I had a, I literally have coffee here. I don't normally do that during the show because I'm hype, hyper enough. And you have no cup. No, but I'll you bring the totally hyperness. Me in the I'll foot. still bring the hyperness. You know that. <laughs> oh, no, I know you do that. No, that, that I count on. Um, Raven, uh, our cohort in crime, uh, I'm going to give everybody a slice of something that's in my head and that uh, these uh, two ladies, Raven as well as uh, Kendra, are putting together. I don't care what her name is. I'm calling her Dee Dee. Mm -hmm. uh, so Dee Dee, that's her. That's the name that I gave in her. Uh, Dee Dee, who's in front of you, her uh, official birth name is Kendra. Um, Kendra uh, slash Dee Dee, as well as Raven. These are not three people. There's only two people I'm talking about right now. Mm -hmm. um, are putting something together that uh, they will unleash 
uh, here on Open Session Podcast uh, at some point. Everyone will enjoy it. Uh, so everyone, please uh, like, comment, share, follow, unlock your destiny, uh, Raven Scott. Uh, make sure that uh, you follow her. Uh, they will be putting something together that I will have the honor and the privilege to showcase on Open Session Podcast in the future. Uh, so you uh, will know about it when we get to that point. Yeah, and right actually, now. Paxton, for your audience, yeah. if they're watching this live right now today, what I'll do for them is if they DM me your name, Paxton, I'll make sure that mm. when that announcement comes out that they're the first to know about it. How about that? Okay. Is that a Hold deal? on a second. Hold on a second. I, I'm, I'm going to probably, everybody, get ready for this. Mm -hmm. Can you be you know, your music every time gets me going. Every, every time you come live. I love it. That's the whole point. So, so you may be broke, but if you can dance, you still yeah. can get the woman. So <laughs> what I was going to say is um, thank you so much before. for saying that. Um, everyone, feel free to watch this back. If you miss that, uh, I'm not going to repeat it because you, you need to watch this back. But um, if you want to be treated special, Kendra will do it. But you need to watch this more than once. <laughs> See how I just stuck that in there? Yeah. All right. Anyhow, so um, there's so much to talk about with you. Uh, however, I'm going to start. I already did the cup. The second thing I had in mind was to do this. More people than ever are trying to improve or develop their life mm -hmm. to be better than where they are at that moment in time. Yeah. Or they may have taken a few steps back, if not a, a couple of steps back. Uh, 10 steps or more back mm -hmm. because of COVID. Right. Personal development is a challenge for a lot of people, especially if they've never had someone coach them, direct them, guide them how yeah. to make necessary steps or what to do first. Yes. You're the dot lady, the queen of dots. Yes. You are a double dot. Mm -hmm. You forever will be DD to me. Yeah. You could write a book in the pseudonym of Didi. Yeah, my, my tag name will be Didi. <laughs> I, I think so. Um, I learned a lot from Raven. I learned a lot by listening to both of you talk together. You both have an element that, that uh, both of you really care about helping people and encouraging people. I have you in front of me right now. What is there about you that motivates you to encourage and help others with personal development? Yeah, I think that's a really great question. And for me, it's because I had a light bulb just turned on for me. And I'm sure you've had that experience at some point in your life where like a light bulb just turned on to you and mm. you say like, never again, you know, like, I'm not going 10 steps back, I'm gonna make some decisions to propel my life forward. And I think that sometimes there's just some people sitting out there that just need that light bulb turned on for them. And right. That is my mission, is to make sure that people are living a lifestyle that they are proud of. They're mm -hmm. making a life of enrichment for themselves. And it's not me, right? It's not me doing the work. It's me telling them, like, you can do it. And they have to believe in themselves and, and put in the hard work because I can't do that for you, right? You're the hero of this story. And I can teach you how to, very at the very first um step of it is I can teach you how to maximize your disposable time, right? And I can teach you the steps to live that lifestyle that you're really proud of, but you have to put in the work. So my mission is to serve the people that are capable of self-discipline, that have an immense amount of tenacity, um, that are ready to just have that light bulb turned on for them and um, live a lifestyle that they're proud of. If you want to be a part of Team Tenacity, you need to get a hold of Dee Dee. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, Kendra, whatever. But uh, Dee Dee is the cool I'm telling you, man. <laughs> Dee Dee is, is your social social media name. So yeah. if you want to be a part of Team Tenacity, uh, Team Tenacity would involve uh, Raven Scott uh, and uh, Dee Dee uh, here in front of you and others. Um, the key is is to accept the challenge, wouldn't you say? It is. I think you just have to, for so many people, you just have to decide. And once you take that, you make that decision, commit to the commitment that you've made to yourself, you know, because you're not going to be able to grow in your relationships. You're not going to be able to grow in your job. You're not going to be able to grow spiritually, mentally without 
making a commitment to yourself and then keeping that promise to yourself. Right. And uh, promise uh, made, promise not kept. Does that mean someone has to start beating themselves up and thinking that they're a loser? No. And that's the thing is that I would rather you have made a goal, made a plan, attempted to execute the plan and fail than never to have tried at all. Right. Because your perspective is going to be opened. Your mind is going to be opened. You're going to realize like, Hey, you know, there's some things that I may have done wrong here. Right. I'm, I'm going through a book right now that I'm absolutely loving. It's called extreme ownership. I am all about personal accountability. Right. And like, if that happens, like it's not to sit there and beat yourself up for, but it's okay to say like, I did not put enough effort forth or I had, circumstances around me at the time that prohibited me from reaching that goal. Now, I am also on the high discipline side where it's like, did you try? Like, did you work your ass off for this? Or, or did you have real roadblocks in the place? And when you truly have those roadblocks, it's not a time to beat yourself up. It's a time for self reflection and to get back on the saddle and, and try to work harder, not harder, because you've I'm not saying that you haven't worked hard, but to get back right. on the pedal and worked hard to build a lifestyle that you love. Uh, you're so nice. I'm saying they didn't work harder. I'm just mm. going to say it. I'm hey, going to say it. I'm not saying that I'm, there's hey, not hey, wait, hold on. out there. You know that. Because... Uh, you, you're nice. I'm the top pop. I'm telling them. I'm telling them like a dad. No, you need to work harder. Mm -hmm. <laughs> get <laughs> and get out of bed sooner. <laughs> get out of bed. That's all I know. Uh, I'm just uh, being uh, mean to everybody on purpose so that they can write me something uh, bad because I don't have people write me things bad. Anyhow, so um, you are the double dot theory queen. I am. Mm -hmm. What I am. in the world does that mean? <laughs> so a couple of years ago, I started um, thinking about this um, this program, and I really I found it on accident. So, um, okay. do you mind if I your, hus to your husband your husband's in this too, right? Oh yeah, he is. I know he does this too, right? Today. Yes. Oh. You know, I love my husband. I'm all about him. But today's my day. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just, I just thought it. It's, in other words, I'm alluding to the fact that it is a part of the family lifestyle, yeah. this it, double dot. This is not something yeah. you do in a basement somewhere in, no. in, in some no, part of, actually, of the planet. Um, so anybody here on this live, anybody that I talk to, they can go back to my Instagram, right? And I know that quite a few people have done this, right? You can go back to my Instagram and see when I started. I launched this double dot theory yes. on june have, 10th june 10th. i have it i have it right over here but go mm -hmm. ahead <laughs> yep go i ahead. launched this on june 10th but before that i had um a group of like-minded folks that i spend a lot of time with in this personal development arena and i did a mm -hmm. beta test of this with them and i really got some feedback from them before i i launched this but really this goes back to about uh, two and a half um, years ago, I really started to make this this mainstream shift in my life, right? Okay. So I had um, I know that this is a buzzword, and I know I know what your face is going to be when you, I hear you hear this buzzword because I know you no, love those. No, buzzwords. it's like, it's a, it's okay. Go ahead. Yes. So look, I have my head down so you can't see. Me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! In fact, I could talk Go to you. Ahead. Go I ahead. love it. Go ahead. Okay. So. You know that a lot of people in this uh, world, we're, we live with these false beliefs, right? And I oftentimes, I hear this term false beliefs happen. Like, I, for me, it's a really high traffic word right now. Um, but that's really where the double dot theory started from. So I am currently and was when I first had this mindset shift, um, I'm working a normal nine to five job. Right. I have a, first of all, I have a killer job. Like it's not just a regular schmegular job that I don't like. I have a killer job that has great benefits, great pay, great retirement. Right. But I have always, um, for the last eight years, I've had this false belief that I have to stay here and I have to live here because of the benefits. Um, and the reason why is I want to take you back to a time about eight years ago. Eight years ago today, um, I was pregnant with our first child. And um, it's almost his eighth birthday. This is a really happy story. I don't want to make it sound like a sad story, but... You're doing um, really good. Even though you didn't bring a coffee cup, I still like you. Go ahead. 
next time. Hey, you come on Friday morning. I'll time. have my coffee cup. Um, every but, every morning, way, I got that coffee cup going. But by the way, you know, I see. You know, you you do you do your video with, with Raven, and, and you got a coffee cup. You guys are chilling. You're having a good time. And she's outdoors, and I'm going like, well, what's up with that? Raven did a show with me. She kept me inside. Was she? She didn't want to show yeah. me to the neighbors. What's up with that? Mm -hmm. so, yeah. no, I'm, just uh -huh. I'm giving Raven a hard time. And by yeah. the way, Coach Deb, uh, I am a meanie. Don't ever forget yeah. that. <laughs> uh, okay, go ahead. I see. I see Coach Deb here. Well, All right, go ahead. Been. I still you. Yeah. see you on. Great to see you, girl. Um, so eight years ago, we were having our first child. We went to the hospital. I was like super confident, right? I had taken. A new first mom classes. I was confident. I was rocking it. I told my husband, I was like, okay. we can stay at home and I could have this baby at home. Oh, wow. So you were talking nice. smack, weren't you? Wait, that was your first so child? Nice. Yeah. Wait, that, like, was your, that was your first child? Yeah, that was my first one. Yeah, and, wow. You were talking. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Yeah, and he's like so nice <laughs> to try and get me to the point where like, hey, honey, like, let's just try and go to the hospital. I'm like, oh, okay, fine. You know, after a little bit of time. And uh, after we got to the hospital, um, we, I was like in labor, all of that kind of stuff. And, um, he was ready to come out, you know, he was ready to be born, but his cord was wrapped around his neck three times. And from the time that he should have been born to the time that he was actually born, he was stuck in my womb for three hours with his head wow. just being mm -hmm. suffocated. Wow. Um, and every time I would have a contraction, Mm -hmm. uh, the cord would just pull him back in, right? So when he was actually delivered, he was blue and purple. Uh, he was, it was almost the point that he was like almost pitch black, dark. Like he looked like he was not going to make it. And uh, as a parent, a first time parent, it's probably the most scariest thing that I've ever gone through in my entire life. And I, I promise you that this is going to get to personal development. This is going to get to disposable time, but I think that everybody has these false beliefs in their life that hold them back. And this is, this is part of that story. So he was born um, four hours. My husband was able to go with him to the little nursery center that they had there. Mm -hmm. And four hours later, I was able to go in and four hours later and me asking my husband to wheel me down to the lobby so I could start screaming. Cause I'm not yeah. a little quiet person when it comes to that kind of stuff. So I was like, I need to see my baby like right now. Yeah. Uh, Cause mom's yeah. going to lose it. So yeah. <laughs> I, uh, your mama, your mama bear came out. Mm -hmm. Yep. Plus, plus, you're just not a quiet person, period. But go mm -hmm. ahead. No, that's not, that's not for me. <laughs> that's ahead. for sure, Paxton. Yeah. So my husband finally was able to get me a wheelchair, wheeled me into the um, the place mm -hmm. where the nursery was, and um, my son was in a box, and the nurse handed me a piece of paper and she said, "You need to sign this. He needs to um, he needs to leave now." And I said is he dead or alive? And wow. she said, he's alive, but he needs help right now. And they didn't have like a facility there that could take care of the needs that he had. So he was able to go to a hospital that was nearby. Right. And um, at that hospital, we learned that he had a massive, massive heart condition. He was born with a hole in his heart. He had a valve that would not push blood out, it wouldn't close, so it mm. just went back mm. into his system. And then yeah. his artery from his left from his heart to his left lung <laughs> did not form. <laughs> and we later found out that it was a genetic condition. But mm. this hospital that was able to treat him was um, by far the best hospital that I've ever seen function. Mm. It was a teaching hospital that's absolutely brilliant at everything they do. They're absolutely brilliant at communicating with parents and making different mm. decisions. And then, um, you know, their care was great. We found out on day two that he had a stroke at birth because of the, the cord. The cord. Mm -hmm. And they said he may not walk, he may not talk, he may not be able to do anything ever again. But they're newborns, and uh, we'll see how, um, how he recovers through this. So on day 10, we were able to go in for the first open heart surgery. This, I tell you, this team was absolutely amazing at being able to dive in, find out the root cause of the problems. They wanted to test every organ to make sure that they were 100% certain of what they were doing in the surgery. And on day 10, they were able to do his first open heart surgery. Now, wow. I tell you this because like I had mentioned earlier in the call, right? I have a killer job, I have great benefits, all of these things, right? 
His first 17 days in the hospital cost over $1.5 million. Wow. And I had been living with this false belief for five, six, seven years that Mm -hmm. I now have to stay here until he's old enough and he grows, he ages out of our medical program. But deep down inside, I knew there were other things that I wanted to do. And I just kept Mm -hmm. pushing it off and pushing it off and pushing it off and saying, in 15 years, in 20 years, I can do the things that I want to do, like in the personal development arena. Mm -hmm. But then, like I said, like the light bulb moment just went on for me. And uh, there's, I think that there's so many people that live with some false beliefs of something that has impacted their situation or has impacted their life in some way, makes them believe that certain things are not possible. And for me, I knew like, I have to stay here forever. And uh, in order to have excellent care for my child, no, I would, I will probably never ever step away from that because I know how excellent the care and the coverage is through my employer. But my Mm -hmm. hope and dream is one day I'll get to be half time, right? And then I'll be able to build, kind of get the boat closer to the dock and then be able to step out into my own journey a little bit sooner than I expected. Because for me, if tomorrow's not promised, 20 years from now is not promised. So why not make some of the goals that you have part of your lifestyle today? It doesn't have to look exactly how it want, how you want it to today, but sure as hell you can do something today in, that, in some aspect of your life to mirror what you want it to look like in 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Mm-hmm. So um, that's really how I got started in this is that I started to realize like, you know, the light bulb just went off for me. And um, Mm -hmm. I was like, you know what, one of the things that I really want to do when I retire is I want to build a nonprofit out. Um, Because my husband and I are like, crazy about, um, we want to live a lifestyle where we are have the ability to be outrageously generous, right? We want to focus a lot of effort and emphasis on that. But everything in our mind up until that point was we're going to do this in retirement. Right. So Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we were like, after I had that light bulb turn on that, like, Hey, I'm living with some false beliefs. I'm living um, in this place where I believe that I have some sort of box put around me and I have to live within this certain box, you know? Right. Um, I really got with my husband. I was like, Hey, let's dream about everything that we want to have in retirement. And let's start making a plan to make part of that life, part of that, a little bit of our life today, right? And so one of the things that we did is we're like, hey, let's start brainstorming ideas for what we'd want to do for our generosity. And we came up with this idea for having a nonprofit in just our local community for um, young entrepreneurs, right? So we give kids in our community $1,000 for a really great business idea. We have a fun award ceremony, all their families come. And it's just a really beautiful way for us to get back. But when I had that light bulb moment go off for me, I had no idea how to do any of this. I had no (laughs) idea how to, I literally, uh, Raven today was like, here's how you get on Clubhouse. I'm like, I have no idea. I'm not tech savvy. And so that's where this double dot theory kind of came from was because I had no idea how to do any of this. That's Raven. Yes. Yeah. She's like super tech savvy. I'm like, he asked Raven, Raven will find out how to get it done. Yeah. I know. I'm like, can we just go live and you just tell me all your tech skills? Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm not good at that, but this is where the double dot theory came in. Right. Is that I started like planning out, like, here's how we want to live our life in retirement. Right. But how do I get there? There were a lot of skill sets that I needed to be able to just start this nonprofit. Like, Do I go with a 503C? Do I start a foundation? What the heck are Mm -hmm. articles of affiliation? I had no clue. But what I did find is like, I'm a busy mom. I don't have very much free time, right? And I found myself in every minute where I would walk up to the coffee bar and I would order a coffee and I'd go sit down. Every minute of that time, I was jumping on my phone. I was researching what is a 503C? What is the difference between this and um, articles of affiliation? All of that kind Mm -hmm. of stuff. And then I asked myself a question. I said, what if I took one topic and I just 
focused on that for 30 days because mm -hmm. my mindset yep. the way my brain works is like I love to challenge myself like if you can mm -hmm. do it like this like what would the result be like if you did it 10 times that you know and so mm -hmm. I made that commitment to myself and I was like how about I try and focus on just one thing for 30 days and let me see what the outcome is right and um that's where the concept for the double dot theory was born and I what I did is I just put it into place right I had all of these retirement dreams that I wanted to make it like uh, a reality, at least in some form or fashion today. And mm. so that's what I did is I just started learning little bits and pieces of every one of my goals. And I would focus on them for just a 30, per 30 day period of time. And I would just focus all of my disposable time on learning just that one topic. And the results, pretty amazing. Like I know that everyone's always like focused on like, what do you get out of it in the end, right? <laughs> but, you know, for yeah. me, like, it it birthed an entire uh, foundation for kids in our local community, you know? But that, it didn't happen overnight, right? Like, you had to make building blocks of all of these different skills that I needed to be able to get there. And every single one of you have an idea of where you want to take your life. And there's, there's some skills that you need to achieve along the way to... And yeah. I'm not a huge proponent of, of like, pay, that you have to pay for all of the schooling mm -hmm. and education. Like, mm -hmm. I'm like school of hard knocks. Let's just go get in there. Go. I understand. You're a yeah. cheapskate. I understand. Yeah, I am. Hell yeah, I'm school of Google. And you should be proud. Of, you should be proud of that because that, that's yeah. <laughs> that's how I raised my children being a cheapskate. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's so, why they have things. That's why they have things now. <laughs> be a cheapskate. For, so mm -hmm. you know, um, it's very important for people to understand who you are because you're going to be coming back multiple times across open session podcast and even narc abuse TV. And so is Raven, uh, Raven Scott, hopefully Raven's still here, or I see Rita has come through Sylvia, uh, Shay Shay, uh, hopefully coach Deb is still here or she's passed through and a number of others. Uh, so I acknowledge you. This show is a little different than some that you have seen before because I'm really introducing uh, Dee Dee to you. I, I'm sorry. I, I'm, this is like the last time I'm going to say sorry to you. Right? <laughs> I cannot stop calling you that. I really, that is not your name, but I just love calling you Dee Dee. Uh, so, like, uh, so I started this two months ago. This is going to follow me for my entire <laughs> social media career. People are going to call me I Dee Dee for the rest of my life. <laughs> Listen, I went through this past weekend. I had a talk with myself. I often do many times over and said, okay, you got to stop calling that, that poor lady that you, you can't keep calling that girl. that I can say girl because I'm an old guy, but I can't. And that's it. It sticks though. Just from a marketing standpoint, yep. she should be called Dee Dee because Dee Dee's are always happy. I'm that's just saying. True. That's true. Kendra is this too. Kendra also, but it's just, I'm sorry. No. Nope. <laughs> What's it? Your G, your G, what does it say? G, my name is going to be. Oh my gosh, I love that, Raven. Okay, okay she said, but I'm a grandma. I'm, I'm sorry. Be Actually, Dee Dee. that's a really good. Yeah, that was pretty good. That's okay. pretty good, Raven. I like that, Raven. Okay, Raven, that's pretty good. Yep. All okay. right, that's pretty good. Okay, yeah, hey, you there you go. It, you called it. There you go. Hey, Grand talk Kids about making retirement dreams happen for you today. <laughs> See, Paxton hey, you planned it already. What they're going to happen. Mm. Look at that, Raven. Thank hey, you but, so but much. Raven came, in, Raven came in and said, This is how you're going to use it. Yeah. Okay. Raven is like, Raven is like, Raven is the modern day Jordan Peterson. And you, or this may, name may not mean anything to you, but we can talk talk about this, all three of us, when we get together, I don't mm -hmm. know, this week or next week, whenever we're going to have time uh, for our future shows. But um, you remind me of a less, a, a less brown. Uh, I hope I'm saying it, you know, said the name right. He's a, Les he's a, a black, older black, you know what I'm talking mm -hmm. about. Okay. Oh, I love Les you, Brown. He's you black. are, I love Les Brown. You are the passion in the room, the motivation in the room. I, I love when we, we talked to you and, and Raven. I, there was a moment when, when I, I did shut up and I wasn't talking. And then, and then both of you just started talking. And I was sitting there, okay, this is exactly what I want. This is mm -hmm. like, if we were in a, if we were in a boardroom and we we're thinking of the next show we're going to come up with, this was like, okay. I told him everything in my head, and now I just get out of the way. And no, let they just, just go, go and do, do it. it. Yes. Do, do, that's actually what I was doing. I just didn't tell you guys that day when we had that meeting. But I was like, okay, they're going to put a show together. And sure mm -hmm. enough, you know from, you know what you guys sent me. And I was going, okay, I can't wait to show this to the public and, and what you guys have in mind. It's going to be awesome. 
everybody. I wanted you to meet uh, Dee Dee today. Uh, you've already met Raven. Raven, I've got to be able to do a couple of shows with her. Uh, and uh, I think it's just an amazing uh, effort uh, that you put forth with your energy. Uh, but you are very creative intellectually. Uh, you, you are extremely intellectually creative woman. So because of that, we have gone 31 minutes. And now it's, I've let you just, you expressed yourself. We talked a little bit about uh, your, your being uh, a part of the double dot or the brains uh, and heart behind double dot. Okay, so here we go. I wanted to do this with you and I'm going to do it. I, that's why I loaded up on coffee because I was ready to do this because mm -hmm. water wouldn't do it. And then you showed up with no cup. So I don't know. What I should make that. that a prerequisite for going live with me. Uh, every time. A yeah. Cup of coffee, you should always have yeah, a cup. It works energy. for you. Mm -hmm. It's there's some people try it and they look like they should really put that down. It looks like a prop. But when you do it, it looks like you should have a cup. <laughs> you I literally should just I have a cup. You, know, you should just mama, have a cup. I got to get that coffee in. <laughs> You, 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 you are kind of like the, this is, this is real old. You're like the Ed McMahon. Like there's Johnny Carson. The Ed McMahon was the sidekick and you, he always had a cup somewhere and everybody goes, what's in the cup? You know, the joke was he had alcohol, but yours, you could, you work well with a cup. I don't know what it is. Oh, Keep good. that in mind when we do the show together yeah. in the future. But, mm -hmm. um, here we go. Uh, I'm going to throw some things at you and, uh, you just go ahead and talk. Uh, we got a few more minutes before we have to end the show, but here we go. I'm not your average personal development junkie. I am a theorist. What is a theorist? Okay, so a theorist is a person within our community that has finished a double dot theory challenge, right? So there's some prerequisites, right? The, the folks that are a part of the theorist community, they are super disciplined folks, right? They're not the people that just uh, start a challenge and then they get a couple days in and then they drop off, right? A theorist, okay. once you finish a 30-day challenge, which is you focus on one topic, um, mm -hmm. spend all of your disposable time on just one topic, and at the end of the 30 days, you've graduated to become a theorist. And I always say, like, I'm not your average personal development junkie, because right. I love personal development probably more than the next guy, for sure. Okay. But I'm not your average personal development junkie, because I'm not just a consumer, and theorists are not just a consumer of information they're an implementer of information, right? So if you want to learn, sit here and learn for 30 days how to uh, self-publish a book, right? Like Miss Raven, she's going to self-publish her book. If you want to learn about that, you're not just going to sit here and read articles and YouTube videos and sort of things like that. You're going to go implement, right? So that's where okay. what the meaning behind that is. Implementation is very important in order to be a part of the 30 day challenge is what you're saying. If I understand you correctly, mm -hmm. is that mm -hmm. correct? Okay. So mm -hmm. since that's the case, if it's important for people to implement something, it means then that they've taken time to choose what they're going to focus on. Right. If that's the case, here we go. You have a posting that says dedicate 100% of your disposable time to learning about one, one, specific mm -hmm. topic for 30 consecutive days dedicate 100 percent of your disposable time mm -hmm. to learning about one specific topic right. for 30 consecutive days when a person does that what is normally the outcome so that's a really great question so like for example right now raven is working on reels and during our live, um, I shared with her, you know, I also learned uh, reels. That was one of my focuses for those 30 days. Now, someone that is just learning reels is probably going to spend a couple days learning how to do reels on Instagram, right? They're going to learn the functionality, how to save audio, how to actually press the button and go do it, how to upload the videos. They're going to learn the functionality of how to actually do that right okay. and that's what your first like you know five six seven days would be in this challenge right but when you push beyond that um, and you commit to learning more than just uh, surface level things you're going to learn things like i i shared with raven right like 
you're going to learn things like how to organize your content in a much better way. I learned um, after I was like diving deep with certain like content creators, uh, different ways to organize my content um, to where mm. it would be um, not just like content batching, but like how to actually save um, information and organize it in like a content planning way. Mm. Um, and I was able to really go dive deep with that. And I know it sounds crazy, but like a lot of my reels are taking like less than two minutes to do. Whereas before it was like 45 minutes. And wow. um, I mean, just the returns on that is a pretty big deal. And to me, like reels is a pretty lightweight topic. But for me, we're gonna, you're gonna be able to grow and implement and educate so many people because you took the time to learn about something like that. So um, the benefit is not always for you, but it's gonna be for the people that, that you work with as well. When it comes to dedicating oneself for 30 consecutive days, what are some challenges you ran into doing that? Challenges with dedicating myself for 30 days? Yep. Um, you know me, like, I love like challenges, right? I love doing that. I love, you know, I'm doing 75 hard right now. That's my mindset. I was getting, I'm getting to it. Yeah. I'm working I my am, way there. Yes. Go ahead. And I know that there are other people that are like me out there in this world. I know that there are people that have an immense amount of self-discipline and they, they don't look at things as being super hard. They just know that every single day the job is going to get done. So for me, like when I'm in those 30 days period yep. blocks of time, I know that like when I'm, I'm going to a grocery pickup, right? I'm thinking in my mind, like I am e going to be easily, it's easily identifiable for me that this is going to be disposable time, right? So I know as I'm driving up to a coffee shop or I'm driving up to a grocery pickup, this is disposable time and I've made a commitment to myself and I know that my mental state and every other state of my being is going to be better if I keep a promise to myself. So for me, um, it's, it's harder to break that promise to yourself than it is to keep it. So, um, I don't know so if we're talking, other people really we're, relate to, but that's, that's no, no, no. It's, it's relatable without a, without a doubt. So you're essentially, you're keeping, you're keeping the mind in a, in a sponge like state and not letting it solidify to just letting time fly by. That's so, so you're, you're feeding it, which it essentially in turn is, is feeding the passion for life and it's keeping the energy high because you're constantly learning something new. Yes. Mm -hmm. You're not and just taking for granted that everything go ahead. Yeah, I don't. So here's one thing I don't recommend <laughs> is that I don't recommend that you do this all the time. Right. I recommend that, people pick a specific number of theories that they want to do during the year and they okay. go and make a commitment to themselves and then they go execute that commitment. Right. For me, some years it might look like I only want to do four of them for this year mm -hmm. in particular, I'm going to be doing eight of them right now. Okay. As I talk to you, I'm not on mm -hmm. a 30 day challenge. Right. So when I go pull up to a coffee shop, I'm trying to engage with people all around me saying like, Hey, how's your day going? What's going on? And trying to right. strike up some conversation. Right. Um, do that again. How does how it go? Do it again. I'm like, hey, how's it going? What's going on? <laughs> you know? I love the way you do that. Go ahead. Go ahead. So um, I don't, I'm not in full challenge mode all of the time, every yeah. day of the week. But I know that if I make a commitment to myself, I'm going to do two mm. double dot theories this year. For sure, it's getting done. And for sure that during that 30 day block of time, I'm going to be looking for disposable time. And I'm going to be executing on that disposable time. So when you look at the screen, not that you can see it now, uh, it's easy for me to scroll back uh, with these monitors here. But uh, so Rita, uh, she's have both of her pages here. I believe I'm looking at both of them. Rita underscore mm -hmm. A-R-B and then Rita uh, dot A-N-T-U-N-E-S mm -hmm. dot Batista uh, is here as well. Um, <laughs> way to go, Rita. I like the way you just said that. I'm on two phones. Yeah. You bad girl. Here we get hold on a second here. We get, I gotta get something for you. Here we go. We get We're gonna clap out that she's uh she is on two phones right now. That means uh she is literally double dotting something. So uh in a roundabout way. So Rita says uh 
read a uh, go read a read a read yeah, a go. one and read a two. Read a A R B is one. On read a she got yes go on both phones. A. Listen, I need you to get like five more phones, and then mm -hmm. we can have you. Uh, we could be uh, uh, seven different Instagram pages, mm -hmm. and uh, anyhow, so you could be a guest on the show. Uh, Rita says, and Rita one A R B says, I will be a scientist illustrator, not in thirty days. What can I do in thirty days? So, I, I I don't I don't know what to do with that question because yeah. I'm not that smart. I'm just the, I hey, just put these shows on. Over here. So put if you want to jump, yeah, <laughs> knock yourself out. Go ahead. Okay. I'm hey, confused. Rita. I'm confused just with the two phones because <laughs> you women are much smarter to be able to multitask. But go ahead. Oh my gosh. Hey Rita. So what I would do is um, I'm assuming that a scientist illustrator. Um, Hold on. Gonna... I'm sorry. Hold on what one second. Of, she wants us to know that she's the same person. Notice how she just. <laughs> I like you, you Rita. We she just you, wanted to make sure we know. We Two you. votes, same person. Oh, well, go ahead. Awesome. You're, you're you're cute. That's sweet. You're making Rita. me like my cheeks. Go ahead. Hey, that's, that's that's good to do. We need to have our mm -hmm. cheeks warm. But go ahead. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna stretch those out real quick before I answer that question. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so Rita, I am sure that uh, I, I'm assuming I should say that this scientist illustrator is a career path that you're looking to take. Um, and if that's a, a career path that you're looking to take, I would think about this in two ways, right? Either one, like you may, um, she said, I'm on my left leg. <laughs> what does that mean? What does that mean? We have no idea. No. We don't. Now you're just toying with our brain. Mm -hmm. But go ahead. You were saying. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? I'm on my left you and I'm on my that? right leg, Rita. You know what? what? And people are going to have no idea what we're Wait, talking about when they he's watch got a the replay. He's got a, to yeah, the they're, gonna, they're not going to have any idea what we're talking about. Okay. Yep. So next time, join the live. <laughs> okay. Preach, sister. Preach. It's free. Uh, Go ahead. Go okay. ahead. You were saying. So I would think about this in one of two ways, right? So the scientist illustrator, you're probably going to have some skills that you need to do the tactical parts of that job, right? So you could pick one of those things. Like maybe part of it is drawing something in um, some digital drawing thing that I have no idea about because I'm not technical. Maybe you want to have some expertise in that. Dive really deep for 30 days on learning that. Now the other side of this is what I want to talk to you about is if you are going into a career field, right? And you are going to be a scientist, scientific illustrator. I guarantee you there's a hundred other people that are scientific illustrators applying for that job, right? And every single time they're going to ask you what sets you apart right? So think about the next natural transition from where you are right now to where you need to be in that career path. And what I would say is like, maybe in that, um, in that field, like an added skill would be storytelling, right? And maybe you need to learn the art of storytelling, right? Or the art of telling a story through digital images or digital illustrations, right? You could spend an entire 30 days. I recommend going super, super deep. And the way that I recommend to do that is YouTube's great, but I was talking to Raven the other day, right? The Another really great way to dive deep when you only have one to two minutes of disposable time is you go to Google, right? You grab your phone, you go onto Google, you type in um, five quick storytelling um, techniques, right? You type in something at the top, It'll bring up your normal search bar when you press search. But when you click on the images button, you know what happens every single time? What's a that? list of like PDF pictures, like little click mm. guides. They'll show you like five tips to telling a story, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. you know, really in 30 seconds or something like that. And yeah. I can literally skim through those. If I have 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes of disposable time, mm -hmm. I just learned something new. I could... Wow. I could do it super quickly and I'm going to retain that information too. Um, and it's going to spark something for the next time I have disposable time, right? And I am a firm believer that every single person has disposable time in every single day, right? If you're going to the bathroom today, you for sure have disposable time. And if you don't go to the bathroom, you need to talk to the doctor. Got it. There it is. <laughs> there it is. And then make sure they talk to you after that. Yeah. Come on back. <laughs> Get so they can get their dots on and, after they've hey, taken care of. Talking and to one them. more thing, like when you go to the yes. doctor's office, yes, and you're sitting in the waiting room, and the doctor's running late. 
You got disposable yeah. time, so I got no excuse for it. There you go. Doggone it. There you go. <laughs> there, you know what? Everyone, please meet the queen of the double dot theory. <laughs> the one and only, the OG herself is here today, ladies and gentlemen. The original, the OG of it all. There's more mm -hmm. on your page. For example, uh, the question, which I've kind of alluded to this already, what's on the other side of your dots? Mm -hmm. So when it comes to what's on the other side of the double dot theory and actually mm -hmm. successfully doing something for 30 days, if I understand mm -hmm. that correctly, is that what yeah. you mean? Yes, sir. What's on the other side of that? Yes. Okay, that's where we... Oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. No, say what you're going to say because I've got, uh, we've gone 46 minutes and I've got something that I want to, I want to stick into, uh, um, stick into the show, but go ahead. Yes. So these are the little dots that we have. So um, what we talk about is that on the left, there's numbers on the left and the right side of your dots. And this might be looking backwards for Instagram. So the left and the right side of your dots. You're good. So I, you're good. Um, when a theorist completes a double dot theory, we like to t post about what's on either side of your dots. And in our community, on the left side of your dots is the number of years that you've been in our community. And on the right side is the number of theories that you've completed this year. So if you are just completing your 30 day um, challenge, then you would be representing a one on this side and a one on this side. So it'd be one double dot one. Now, if you're like me and you're doing eight of them this year, you would have like the number two on the left side and then a number eight on the other side. So the double dots is a representation, right? It's a symbol of completing um, challenges and it's a symbol of the commitments that you've made to yourself. And it's a symbol that, um, you know, you are have been in this community for a certain amount of time and every year um, it refreshes, right? So if you get a couple done, uh, in 2021, and you start with your first one in January of 2022, you'll be mm -hmm. representing a 2-1 at that point when you get your first one done. So um, that's where uh, the question comes in is like, what's on the other side of your dots? Because that's the lingo in our language to say like, where are you uh, at in your double dot journey? Yeah. Then you're a dotologist then. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. I just, I I just so. made that up. That's not yeah, real, everybody. I like that okay. The dots. So, so. Um, we will be uh, putting our brains together and working together, you and I, as well as Raven, when we are getting prepared for our future shows. Mm -hmm. Let me get, I'm going to get settled in here because I'm about to have some more fun with you. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> let, me, let me do this. So I'm getting ready. Okay. I have four cards in front of me, yellow, pink, mm -hmm. yellow, pink. Yellow on my show is never the easiest card okay it will always be the most challenging one mm -hmm. but since you like a challenge that's a piece of cake so i will start off with a pink card i okay. will read what's on it and you would just have at it okay let's do it. let's do it but before we do that we have gone 49 minutes and and almost uh, 50 minutes in just a moment mm -hmm. but i'm going to ask you this question you have a video in which you're pointing your finger at the public social social media uh -huh. And it says boundaries. What are your thoughts? This has nothing to do with the cards. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts when you hear the word boundaries? So, I mean, if you can't pick up a theme here yet, like I love <laughs> promises that I've made to myself, right? And to me, a boundary is a promise that you've made to yourself, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not just that you're, you're thinking about it. It's that you actually implement that boundary. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not of the mind that you have to implement that boundary in a rude way, right? I'm a kill them with kindness kind of a person, right? But I am, um, I like to be able to like identify here are my boundaries. I like to, it takes me a long time, honestly, if I'm being 100% honest, it takes me a long time to form what my boundaries are going to be. And then after that, I have to think, it takes me a long time to like digest it and think about how I'm going to execute on those boundaries. So I'm still constantly growing in that area. Um, but that's one of those, um, those that 
theory one was like when we were kind of mm -hmm. thinking about doing different types of theories. And um, mm -hmm. I know for me, I have a constant list of, uh, it's a note section actually that I have of different um, double dot theory ideas that I want to do in the future. Like Rita had said, you know, she wants to be this scientific illustrator. Well, yes. you don't need just one skill to do that, right? There's probably 20 skills that you need to be able to do that. I have all of them written down, including the boundaries one. So um, when I was making that reel, I just listed out a whole bunch of different types of, um, of ideas. And literally, sometimes that's how I do it, is I just scroll and pick because I know that I need every single one of those skills that I put on that list and any of them could serve me now. So um, when I pick one, that's kind of how I do it. It's just that was like a fun, like, like drawing the lottery reel and just picking one. So, okay. Yeah. And th this is a this is a self-imposed lottery that you're mm -hmm. putting on yourself that you will win every time you pick one of those things you personally feel. Mm -hmm. Let me get this in here a little bit. That you personally feel you want to work on. Mm -hmm. You're yeah. able to scroll through, as it were, this list you have. Mm -hmm. What is the posting when it says stop the scroll? What does that mean? So you know how when you would go to a coffee shop normally, right? And you pull up and you make your, um, you put your coffee order in with the barista and you go sit down. What's the first thing you do, right? You grab your phone, you open up your Instagram and you start scrolling, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then when you are on a, on a double dot theory challenge, you need to stop the scroll because your job when you're in that challenge, you've made a commitment to yourself that you're going to use all of that disposable time to go focus on your one topic. And so that's what stop the scroll is, is that you need to stop doing your normal habit, mm -hmm. stop it and go, go learn about the topic that you committed to at the beginning of this challenge. I have, I have slow walked you up to this moment on purpose <laughs> uh, after, uh, after those two, because I wanted to get to this point of the mm -hmm. show. We have gone 53 minutes. Yeah. We are going to now, have a little different type of a show. So here we go. Let's do it. Stop the scroll. You just enlightened us what that mm -hmm. means to stop the scroll. Mm -hmm. When a person stops the scroll, that means that they're going to work on some challenges that they put on themselves, as it were, mm -hmm. so that they can continue to improve themselves. Personal development. Mm -hmm. When it comes to stopping the scroll, personal development, at some point, you recognize there were things you needed to improve in. Mm -hmm. List three things that you have been able to recognize you needed to improve in as a wife, as a mom, and as a woman. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, this hits home because I had to, um, last year, like we, we had uh, COVID hit, right? And it hit everybody a little bit differently, right? And... For me, like I, I am like usually on, 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 but then like I've been working in like the discipline arena my entire life for like employee discipline. And like, if I've like over articulated, over communicated, like this is what you need to get done. Like I started to recognize, like I was getting really angry. Like mm. I was getting super angry and you have nowhere else to go. We were on a imposed lockdown for six weeks. We were not allowed to leave our house because of my son's heart condition. And mm -hmm. we literally, they would not, they told us you're not allowed to go on walks, nothing, because we were, he was such high risk mm -hmm. that you, you have every aspect of yourself, your relationship, everything is um, highlighted, right, on display for you <laughs> to mm -hmm. really have yeah. a moment of self-reflection. So mm -hmm. I quickly realized that that in my parenting, uh, that I was uh, really quick to anger in situations where it shouldn't have been that quick to anger. So one of the things that I did is I made that a double dot theory because I don't think that, that I had the tools or the resources to do that, honestly. Uh, like I have always been in a, like in families and dynamics that have always been like really, um, like kind of a, in a hot head uh, mentality. And mm -hmm. that was my natural reaction, right? And um, I'm still that way, right? But I have 
done a lot of work in that arena. I focused on it A for 30 days when I committed to doing that double dot theory challenge to mm -hmm. learn about different ways to improve. And then I also am a big believer in setting goals for the year and intentions for the year, right? So one of my intentions is to be slow to anger. Um, so that's one huge area um, in my parenting mom life that definitely needed some improvement, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then the uh, relationship side of things, uh, being a wife. Um, you you know, never saw this question coming, did you? Never no, saw it coming. No, that's well, go ahead. You were saying, development. go ahead. But you know what? This is all personal development, right? Is, um, you know, those areas that you have to like um, have a little bit of self-reflection on. Uh, I always like to say that, like, my two superpowers are tenacity and self-reflection, right? So, uh, that's pretty good. That's I, pretty good. I mean, I live by those. I could see that. I know? could see that. Go ahead. Because you have to, like, at some point be like, it's not everybody else, right? It's me, <laughs> you know? And I have to pause. You might, be, you might be able to make some T-shirts and sell those, but go ahead. <laughs> it's I, I'll, buy it's me. I'll buy one of those. <laughs> Hashtag, it's not everybody else. Yeah. It's got to be me. It's got to go be me. Uh, so like in my uh, relationship, I think that I have had to definitely approach communication in a different way. Uh, and that is something that I think when you're married is, is a never ending, um, I don't know if growth cycle is, a, is the right word for that, but it's, uh, you're never, you never stop learning how to communicate. So it's, it's everything, right? Like if you want to have a really happy, healthy marriage, uh, you have to be over communicative about finances. Like, and that's not easy for everybody. Right. Um, so, you know, that's especially one area that we recognize, like in our marriage, like, you know, we were both doing things separately and we decided in 2016, like, Hey, like we have these broad goals that we want to be able to achieve one day. And if we don't get our act together, we're never going to achieve that. So we had to change our entire communication style. We had to change the way that we openly talked about finances. I had yeah. to move my perspective all the way over to the other side because uh, it just like the way that we handled money and finances was completely different. And you know what? Guess what? We set ourselves out for a challenge. We uh, made our goal. Wow. We followed the um, Dave Ramsey's uh, seven baby step program. <laughs> we became debt free. You got my boy DR now, yes. uh, Dave Ramsey. Yes. I need him in. Mm -hmm. And so we became debt free in April of 2017. And oh, then... I'm dope. No, no, we got it. Yep. Hold on. <laughs> yep. That's that's good news, Dave yep. Ramsey. Yeah, you got it. Mm -hmm. if I get him on the show one day, I'm gonna have fun. Hopefully I've one gotten, day I'll get him I on the show. I have gotten onto his show, and it was so awesome. Awesome, so awesome. awesome. Mm -hmm. So that's the one area that I think uh, relationally, like the communication, it's something that you should always um, self-reflect on, and it, there's always a ton of room for improvement. Uh, so think about every pillar of your life, like finances, having kids, having anything like your parenting style. Every area is a new opportunity to learn how to communicate. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, Don't yeah. be afraid of it, right? Mm -hmm. Open up that communication line, right? Right. right. Open it up. Uh, when it comes to uh, you know communication, is uh, my parents would highlight communication is like the water cycle on the planet. You know the water cycle on the planet works even when we don't even know it's working, because mm -hmm. uh, you know the rain comes from somewhere, water goes somewhere. It's mm -hmm. always flowing. Yes. And, and uh, it, it, as long as nobody puts up a, a dam to it, it works just fine. It flows just mm -hmm. where it needs to go. Communication is the same. There's, you know, if people don't put up walls to it, mm -hmm. it'll flow and everything will feel just fine. And there's always yeah. growth wherever there's water. There's yeah. always growth somewhere. And uh, water and communication are very similar. The more communication, the more things grow. When mm -hmm. it's stunted, then that's when things start to die off. Yeah. Uh, that's just me. My senior citizen comment for the show. Okay, now, yeah. one more thing, mm -hmm. real quick, that you got. That was two things. Yeah. What's the third thing? Uh, so you said marriage, parenting, and what was the third pillar? I don't remember. Girl, I'm old. I don't remember oh, stuff. Yeah, man. <laughs> so <laughs> one area remember. that I need to improve in, um, 
so I mean I could say like one area that I did not I know that okay this should be like a little this is do I have to do I have no, to put a disclaimer like, out before you say it? so I knew <laughs> I knew for a long time that that I wanted to step out into this personal development realm, <laughs> wait, right? Wait, Sylvia, I'm sorry. Sylvia is so on it. Thank you. Hey, listen, when you get senior citizen like me, I say a lot of things and I forget, but I mean them all. But Sylvia oh. reminded us as a woman. <laughs> thank as you, Sylvia. Woman. Hold on, wait. You, no, Sylvia. this is for Sylvia. Sylvia, this is for the beautiful Sylvia. Here we go. Thank you. Thank you. thank you, my friend. I appreciate it. So as a woman, yes. go ahead. You, so you as, did as a mom and as a, as a, as, as a, a mom, in relationship, as a parent and as a woman, um, what growth and personal development as a woman has been there? Yeah, I think that, hmm, that's a hard one. I think it's, as it, a woman, it, well, you know, as a woman, you've been that longer than you've been maybe a, a mom and that's a, true. That's and in a relationship. True. So that one should yeah, actually I be, think, oh, I have a good one. Okay. So, okay. Um, I have to, like, I always want to give credit where credit is due. So there's a woman named Natalie Hodson and she's an absolute wonderful, um, I wouldn't say she thinks of herself as an influencer, but she has influenced like hundreds of thousands of people. And wow. she used to have a program that has been expired for years, but I have followed this woman for so long and I'll, I'll probably follow her till, you know, my days are done. Because I followed her in a time as a woman, that I was having a really hard time with like body images, right? And I, oh, I okay. never once thought that like, uh, I was, I was not happy with what I would see in the mirror. Yeah. And she um, used to have this program called uh, the Dollar Workout Club. Now, mm. since this program happened, uh, they were actually on Shark Tank. They launched this business. And you only paid a dollar a month to be a part of this uh, workout program. They've since uh. transferred all of the hundreds and hundreds of videos onto YouTube. So you can do them for free. But at the end of every video, they have this like um, time where they just pause and just talk directly to their viewers. Right. They're not, uh, it's three folks, but they'll just pause and just say like, you know, I really thought that like this message of motivation would be really helpful for you. And, um, I had recognized for a long time, like, you know, this isn't the healthiest of space for me to be in. And uh, I really just tapped into them and all of their resources and um, was able to like make a mental shift in that arena. When you made a mental shift, mm -hmm. technically in all three areas, when it came to anger, when it came to communication mm -hmm. and when it came to the way you viewed your body, mm -hmm. they're all mental shifts that you have technically made. And you committed to them and you went about them by stop scrolling and you improved your, your areas of life. And we all continue to make improvements. But when it comes to you, when you made the mental shift, mm -hmm. what were the benefits that you, just real quickly, what mm -hmm. were some of the benefits that came to you mm -hmm. when it came to personal development and making these mental shifts? When it came yeah. to anger, communication, and body positivity or body image. Yeah. So for the anger side of things is that like when I took a second to like not feed into my emotions of like the moment and I it made me take a step back mm -hmm. and really listen better to what mm -hmm. my kids were saying and what their actual needs were from their mom in that moment and uh, I wasn't born with compassion that's not my uh that's not my strength right I literally I don't think you can see it but I have white ink tattoos I don't know if you can see them on camera I, I can see them but I literally have compassion like tattooed on me because I always say that that's not something that I was born with but okay um for me I think that that self-reflection required that right um and same thing with like communication you know um with my husband, I've been able to reap so many benefits because we've changed our communication style and our communication right. style is different for every aspect of our life. So I yeah, look back yeah. where I was, where we were like you yeah. know, three or four years ago and where we are today. And I'm like, we are literally building a house. We're building a business. We're building, both of yeah. us are of our own businesses and we have a nonprofit together and we have beautiful children that are just happy as can be. And it's, you know, that mental shift happened and we've executed on it. And it gives you just little tiny building blocks that just help you 
um, build a new identity almost. And um, I think just like my, the way that I think about myself is not, um, it's not negative anymore. You know, yeah. I don't, like go to my closet and be like, I have nothing to wear. Because when women say that, it's not that they have nothing to wear. It's just that they don't think that they look good in anything that they wear. And wow. um, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> and that took a wow. very, a lot of, a lot of work to get there. Um, but, yeah. you know, if you want to reap the rewards, you have to, have to put the work in now so I had this like sign made for our house um before we started the building process for this house I had this sign yeah. made that said prepare for harvest right and Ooh, the, reason, nice. the reason why I had that sign made was because um in like from Dave Ramsey I heard him like say if you plant corn uh, don't yeah. be surprised <laughs> when corn grows so yeah. for me, I took that one step that's, further. That's a Dave Ramsey quote yeah. for sure, without a doubt. So I yeah. took that one step further and I'm like, well, prepare for harvest. Because if you plant corn, corn is going yeah. to grow. But if yeah. you plant blueberries, blueberries are going to grow. So go start planting stuff in your life that you want to grow from and and go reap those rewards. Because the only person, honey, that's doing it for you is you. So get your ass out there and go do it. Yeah, there you go. There you go. I, I You know. There's so much that we could talk about more. We have gone one hour and seven minutes and counting. And uh, here we go real quick. Yep. Um, you've already discussed one of the cards. I was going to ask you about double dot successes. That card's gone. You did that already. <laughs> um, here go a pink card. Here we go. You get ready now. Mm -hmm. We'll do this real quick here. Um, three words. Tell me the order they go in. Three words. You've said them during the show. You said the word implement. You said the word uh, application or to apply something. And you said the word commitment. Mm -hmm. Commitment, application, implement. Commitment, and application, application, implement. Commitment. Which one is first, second, or third? Implement, application, or commitment. Um I would say commitment is first because you need to first cast a vision for your, your dreams, what you want them to do. And then you may need to make a commitment to yourself. And I'm not talking about the half-assed commitments. Like I'm going to start this challenge. No, like this challenge is getting done. So um, I would say first it's to um, make a commitment to yourself. Second is applic is um, implementation, right? So you need to go put the systems in place to go do those things. Not like, oh, today, like for 75 hard, right? I have to do two 45 minute workouts a day and they have to be a minimum of three hours apart. My excuse at the end of the day is not gonna be like, oh, I ran out of time. No, like I have to put systems in place the night before to make sure that my yeah. day Absolutely. is on schedule mm -hmm. so that I can succeed in the commitment mm -hmm. that I made to myself, right? Mm -hmm. So I would say commitment first, implement uh implementation second getting those systems in place and then the third is application and application to me would mean that like this like system is a well-oiled machine and mm -hmm. i don't care yep. how monotonous it is you're gonna yep. get up there and freaking do it because you're not mm -hmm. doing this for the quitter inside of you like you're doing this to yep. get to a place where you are serving yourself in the goals and the visions that you've created for yourself. So go freaking do it. I don't care if you're bored. I don't care yep. if you're tired, go do it because it's for yourself. And for me, I know that that message does not resonate with everyone. Right. Mm -hmm. I know that that might sound really harsh for some people. Um, but for me, like the theorists that are inside of my community, the people that are, like my, my dream people that I resonate with, mm -hmm. uh, they will relate with that message, right? Because um, that's, that's the people that I am put on this earth to serve. Well, that card's done. That was awesome. All right, now you get to a yellow card, and then we have one more card left, and that's a Let's pink one. So the yellow card is... Give me a hard one. <laughs> yeah, well... Let's do um, it. Okay, here we go. Let's All do right. it. Two words. Kay. Two words are on this card, Okay. Got it. We have gone one hour and 10 minutes yep. and counting. And here we go. Two words, the yellow card, mm -hmm. okay? the two words. And tell me, 
this is this is going to be really difficult. Tell me the benefits of these two words. Okay. okay. The two words are goals. The second word is growth. The first word is goals. Mm -hmm. G O A L S. Mm -hmm. And the second word is growth. Mm -hmm. The definition of those two words from your eyes and from your life. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. Those two words. So for me, uh, literally on that pay, that um, nonprofit that we created, like our our mantra on there is that a goal is a commitment you've made to yourself, right? And um, to me, that is exactly what a goal is. It's a commitment you made to yourself. And you know, for me, like I will take everything I have um, to put towards uh, completing that goal and accomplishing that goal. So you say goal and commitment, right? Goals, that's the first word. Mm -hmm. The second word is growth, G-R-O-W-T-H. Mm -hmm. So any time in your life, right, where, um, where you have that moment of self-reflection, right, and you have that moment where you say, like, I could have done that differently, right? Mm -hmm. uh, growth doesn't come from just identifying that, right? Growth is putting that plan into action and going and doing it differently the next time, right? And then when you when you take a second to pause after you did something differently and recognize, like, that's how I want to live my life, right? Mm -hmm. That is the moment that it is, for me, considered growth, right? Um, so that's what I would encourage you to do is get out there and do a ton of self-reflection and then change it, right? Because you are the only person that have the ability to make that change. Growth goals. That was good. Okay, last card. Let's get it. Your your um torture, Amina, show is coming to an end soon. So here we go. All right. <laughs> Future projects on the way with you and I and Raven, some stuff mm -hmm. that we're gonna be doing together. Everybody will get to see that pretty soon coming yep. uh their way. Right now we're gonna do this last card. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna read this one word maybe 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 not i'm going this word that is on this card mm -hmm. i want you to describe how this word has changed your life okay okay you got that yep right on it. so here we go i'm going to slowly put it up to the screen and maybe you can read it it's backwards but maybe you can read it can you see it there it says light blue what does that say? Does that say light blue? Light bulb. Light bulb. Light bulb. Light kind of like in the movie. Bulb. Yeah. Yes. Light bulb. Yeah. How has that word changed your life? For me, that was like the defining moment where I decided, um, I made a conscious decision to like um, lead with my intuition, right? Like that that light bulb moment happens for every single one of us. Right. And for me, it may be that you hear it, but you don't go yeah. do anything about it. Right. And for me, I'm an implementer, right. I want to push mm -hmm. the boundary on things like mm -hmm. that. And for me, like, I want to listen to that, that calling for me and go pursue that. So for me, that was the defining moment where I made this shift in my false belief that like, maybe this is possible and maybe I should get my button gear and, and put in the work in to go learn the skills that I need mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. be a good storyteller, to learn Instagram, Raven, to learn mm -hmm. clubhouse, right. <laughs> to learn all the things that I need to do to share that, um, that message with yeah. people. Yeah, you are indeed an implementer. Uh, when many moons ago, when I was a part of the corporate world, mm -hmm. I would have loved to hire someone like you, because and put you in a boardroom full of people who think about a lot of things, but then they never go past implementing them because they use their energy to think of things mm -hmm. that are different and unique. Right. Uh, I would pop plop you down in the midst of all of them. Because I know it'll get done. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. You know, yeah. we feed them enough energy so that they can keep thinking and keep their insulin level balanced so they can yeah. keep thinking. 
and we're going to load you up with a bunch of carbs and insulin and, mm-hmm. <laughs> and protein. And, and, and tell you, go get it. <laughs> caffeine. Yep, caffeine. And we're going to be pumping them full of protein and stuff. Yeah. And say, hey, you guys sit there and think, here's the tuna sandwich. Mm-hmm. Here's some, some fish. Eat, think. Yeah. And then, you know, you sit there taking the notes and go like, okay, I'm done. I know how mm-hmm. to get this done. Right. And just let you keep them in the room. You you can leave the room. They're in mm-hmm. lockdown. You just get there. You go, you go play and yeah. figure out how to get it done. Being an yeah. implementer is what I wanted to showcase about you. Because uh, when you, uh, and hopefully uh, a number of projects can be uh, turned out between you and Raven, uh, that will benefit the people that will listen to both of you. And uh, I will get the privilege, privilege to be a part of it. Uh, but both of you are very intelligent, exceptionally beautiful people. Okay. But Rita has stolen the show with her last comment there, if you can see it. Oh, I can draw that? Are you sure I said, the light bulb? I said the light bulb, yeah. She, mm-hmm. she totally threw that up just when you started talking. Hey. So if anybody saw me laughing, I wasn't mm-hmm. laughing at, at Didi, uh, at Kendra, but uh, we may need to get her to uh, draw us a light bulb. Uh, because maybe we will have to change the show and call it the light bulb uh, yeah. series. Is there any <laughs> chance, Rita, that you can give me some sort of comic strip with me and Paxton? Like, my name's Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, no, my name's Dee. <laughs> That's not, actually not a bad idea. That's actually, and it should be on your page. It yeah, should be on yeah. your page. It should be on your page. Yeah, you, now we're going to have to talk about that. That's that's know, actually not a bad idea. Whole session with Rita, whole too. Series, I have a whole series <laughs> of stuff going uh, where it's all about personal development. You have laid out a number of things. Mm-hmm. Um, you and Rita uh, continue to talk to each other as long as you like. Follow each other. Like, comment, share, follow. Mm-hmm. Uh, double dot theory. Uh, be a, a good support to Kendra. Uh, Lady DD, thank you for being here. You uh, are the welcome. queen of double dot theory. The, the, the theorist herself. I yeah. appreciate it a great deal. Um, everybody, we're bringing the show to an end. But don't think this is the last time that you will see Dee Dee. Nope, uh, Dee Dee and uh, I will come together with Raven. Mm-hmm. We have some other things in mind. Well, I'm going to stop rambling because I drink coffee, which I try not to do during the show. I yeah. did it for you today. Go ahead. Say what you're going to hey, say. Wanna Last say thing you want to talk thing. about, the, give, the double dot. Go ahead. I want to give one more thing. I know I, I gave a little uh, clue earlier in the, in the show that was a hint that if you want to follow do something in the DMs, you can but also, I want to give uh, one opportunity to your audience that if they send me um, the word live, what I'll do is I will send you what I've sent to Miss Raven, and she's started this uh, challenge. I'll send awesome. you a, um, a little gift pack um, in the mail. So just send me the word live to my DM, and I'll get you something sent out there. And I would love it if any of your followers l- would love to come live with me on a Friday morning. Ooh, there um, we go. Because what we do on Friday mornings, you can go back and check um, Raven's live. What we do is on Friday mornings, we have Focus Friday, where if you want to start this challenge, you come on live with me and you just shout out what your focus is for that 30-day challenge. And then I'll follow up with you and give you some some coaching and some guidance along the way. So I just want okay. to throw that out there as an invite to your, your folks. And no, uh, we don't do invites. You know what we do? We tell them what they're going to do. There's no invite. They ain't getting invited. So you need he, to come email me. There you go. DM That's me, what I want. And then you're going to come live with me <laughs> real quick. It. And I'm going to have you shout out what your thing is. And then 30 days from that, you're going to come on with me on a Thursday. We're going to do Theorist Thursday. And we're going to check how you did your progress. So hit me in the DMs. You know, we ain't inviting nobody. We tell you what you're going to do. That's all right. Because we, we, we love you so much. We're going to tell you. What you're you're going to eat your vegetables. And you're going to yeah. go there on Focus Friday. I like the Focus Friday. Mm-hmm. Uh, I saw that uh, show that you guys did. That was good. All right. So everybody, please, all all three followers that I have here on. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so everybody, please make sure uh, that you pay close attention to Double Dot Theory. Your Instagram, I've been saying it over and over, plugging it, of course. Your Instagram page is? Double Dot Theory. Come on by. I'd love to okay. have you. Yes, and so everyone, please support uh, the Double Dot Theory. Uh, feel free to join it. It's going to benefit you if uh, that's uh, it works for you and that's what you're looking for. But more importantly, you will learn something about yourself by associating with Kendra. Uh, you will. I've watched uh, your, your your stuff. You you got to keep making videos. You're very Thank good you. at it. You're, you're very good at your videos. You. And uh, the coffee cup comes in. <laughs> you're gonna have to start a line of coffee cups. They're all different. Every time I you do something that. on Friday How with, with a different be. different hashtag on it or 
promoting yeah. a show or mm -hmm. something that something you're doing yep. uh, we, I, i'll tell you personal more personal development junkie i'll do that yeah sure. <laughs> yeah there you go yeah there you go personal development pdj no you can't really do. okay yeah. but no mm -hmm. something uh, no yeah. personal i like that that's good mm -hmm. but your cup should say something each time and then uh they could you know they could uh they could they could they could purchase a, a cup or donate uh, mm -hmm. a cup or or buy Don't a cup that. uh paxton's yeah. about to do my um so. Distribution <laughs> channels, real quick. <laughs> no, no, I will give you. I I like to be invisible. We can talk about it, and I can give you ideas. But don't mention my name. Then people people will start DMing me. Hey, can you help me? And I'll have to tell can them I get no. That cup? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll do that. I'll tell them. Okay, this is the get thing. I'll do that. But like, it, I don't want to be your. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Not, well, not you. So I, I'll do it for my you. But I won't are do it. Hurting. Okay. You guys are cracking okay. me up. Hey, there's a cup right there. That's the first cup. My cheeks oh, are my hurting. Cheeks are hurting. <laughs> Oh my god hashtag Patrick. my cheeks are hurting it, all right man. listen um i expect to see t-shirts that say that too by the way it, it, then your little your little instagram name right underneath it or your website right should, underneath my it. cheeks are hurting it, 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 yes no seriously that's what you should. all right okay 75 hard so real fun. quick everybody we're, we're probably hey look yes, if yes. you guys are bored you guys want to leave it's cool but yes. thank you for staying sylvia mm -hmm. rita anybody mm -hmm. else that's here thank you so much for doing so 75 hard yep. we're gonna have to talk about that another time yeah. i've had only one other person on my show that's mm -hmm. doing that and uh i look forward to uh having a show about mm -hmm. 75 hard yeah um I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna do it one day and uh, you're gonna help me along with someone else to spearhead that because yeah. uh that community is huge mm -hmm. and there's some really good experiences in there that are quite breathtaking yeah uh, similar to personal development when it and comes it's to the 75 community hard. that's there too like the level of person that, that decides to take on that challenge and complete it yeah i don't know if it's crazy or amazing i i think it's a little combination yeah. of both but i love those people that finish those challenges and they just make my yeah. heart like beat i love it yeah it's and, really amazing uh i i just got to uh not this past weekend but the weekend before watching my daughter who I've never thought would ever do a challenge did uh, that tough mutter thing out here in California yeah. and um, watching her do obstacles. It was just, uh, it was, it brought tears to my eyes to watch her overcome huge walls and different things mm -hmm. like that. Whatever personal development challenges you are going to embark on, mm -hmm. don't forget Kendra. And uh, by all means, feel free to come here on Open Session Podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, we have to go, but we got to give a little shout out to Rita and both of her phones and uh, both of her pages for being here. We got two guests for the, we got uh, two guests for the price of one, and uh, we appreciate it a great deal. Right now, bye for now. Yep. You don't change a thing, my dear. Dee Dee, stay sir. the same. You um, you're on it. Keep implementing and keep uh, helping others implement. Thank you very Thank much. You. I appreciate you it, too. everybody. We'll, we'll see you soon. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye.